Hello, my name is Tanner, and this is Grizz, and one of us needs a new collar. Grizz is an eight week old puppy, and he's gonna be growing fast, but we're gonna make him a really nice collar, and we're gonna show you how to make a collar for any size dog. It's gonna be a really simple but durable collar, really good looking collar that doesn't involve any stitching, just some riveting and some really basic hardware and tools. So stay tuned and we'll show you how to make one. So as far as measuring for the length, I am going to just take a, a tape measure, flexible tape measure, and measure around his neck. I'm not gonna make a tight measurement. I'm gonna make kind of a kind of a loose measurement, you know, keeping my fingers underneath the tape measure like this. That's right at 13 inches. So let's try that. That'll be our target. Kind of our uh, central measurement, 13 inches. So let's talk real quick about the supplies and the tools we're going to use in this project. So the leather I'm going to use is about 10 ounce bridal leather. This is a one inch wide strip. You can either cut one inch wide strips off of your hide or some places you can order a strip just like this. So some other tools we will need are something to cut your leather like a utility knife or a fancier knife like this. We're going to need some hole punches. We're going to need two of them, a 1 8 inch hole punch and a 3 16 inch hole punch. And I like to have this one inch oblong hole punch as well. It's a really handy tool and I'll show you why in a few minutes. I like to use brass rivets or copper rivets like this. I do not prefer the double cap rivets. They're just not quite as strong as these, but we're gonna need some rivet setting tools like this. And the hardware that we're gonna need is pretty basic as well. Besides the rivets, we'll need a one inch center bar buckle and we're gonna need two D rings like this, two one inch D rings. Now these are brass on the inside, but they're coated in a black coating, which looks kind of cool. Uh, I like to use an edge beveler, a wing divider, a uh, ruler, and something to hammer on, something to set the rivets on, like an anvil, and then also a punch pad. Oh yeah, and a maul. All right, so I did a little bit of figuring, and I made a nice pattern here that I think is going to work out pretty well for our dog collar. I've made a couple in the past, and this is pretty close to what I did. So you remember I measured my dog's neck circumference at 13 inches. Let's call the circumference X. So X equals 13 inches. Now I worked out that the overall length needs to be X plus eight inches. So regardless of the circumference of your dog's neck, in order to make this collar, just take that circumference and add eight inches. So in this case, the length of the leather that I need to cut is 21 inches. Now after we get that 21 inch strap cut out, we're gonna start punching some holes. And first we're gonna do one eighth inch holes and we're gonna start one half inch from the end. So we're gonna go a hole here, one half inch from the end, then space out an inch, and then another inch, and then three quarters of an inch past that, so we're at the three and one quarter inch mark, we're gonna do a one inch slot. I like to use this one inch oblong punch. It works great just to punch that slot out, and then once we get to the end of that slot, another three quarters of an inch is a hole, another one inch, another one inch. So these are all marked out. You can screenshot this and kind of save this pattern, and eventually I'll try to put this on my website. So that's that end of things. So now moving down to the finished end of the belt. Uh, at this end, you can finish this with a, an English point or whatever kind of tip you want on there, whatever the look of the, the tail of the belt is you, that you want. But then three inches back from the end, we'll do our first hole. And these are 3 16th holes instead of eighth inch. And then from there, I like to space back about three quarters of an inch. So go three quarters, three quarters, all the way back five times total. And the goal will be for the buckle to normally sit in this middle hole here. So hopefully if we've kind of measured everything and if the pattern's good, that's about where we're gonna land. It's starting to look like a dog collar here. So one thing I'm gonna do now is bevel the edges. Also, this is gonna fold over here. This is where the buckle's gonna go. And we'll rivet these and install those D-rings here. 
This gets a little bit thick, so I'm gonna skive this, and uh, that's an optional thing, but that would just reduce the bulk inside here. want to burnish the edges this would be a good time to do that. I'm just gonna use some plain saddle soap, a bit of water in there just to make kind of a slurry. Get a nice burnish on those edges. So now we got to install our buckle. Kind of drop it on like this. Up like that so that little tongue comes through our slot. And you want it to look just like this. This is, has a roller on there, and that's going that direction. Now you remember these two D-rings we've got. These are going to go in here. One's going to be for you know hanging your tags on, the other can be for the leash. They also both serve as kind of a keeper for the tail of this after it comes through. It's going to, they can sort of tuck under there and not be flapping around too much. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you get to make one of your own, whether it's for one of your dogs or, or somebody else's. You guys take care. We'll see you on the next video.